Hi friends, East Coast Pete here again. Call my show, Let's Save Rock. Today we're going to talk about Graham Gouldman. I don't think you haven't heard of him, but you've heard some of his music, I'm sure. It's out there and it's everywhere. Born in 1946. Beginning at 17, he formed several bands in and around Manchester, including the Whirlwinds, who were signed by HMV. Law Krem was in that band. Then in 1964, they added drummer Kevin Godley and changed the name to the Mockingbirds. They signed a contract with Columbia, but the band split up after only five singles. Graham wrote For Your Love, which became a hit for the Yardbirds. He played bass for the Mindbenders in 1968 and wrote School Girl and Uncle Joe and the Ice Cream Man for them. Eric Stewart was in that band. He also wrote Look Out of Any Window and Bus Stop for the Hollies. And also Listen People and No Milk Today for Herman's Hermits. And Tally Man for Jeff Beck. Gouldman was rewarded for his efforts, but he wanted to write, publish, and sing his own music. He released one solo album, The Graham Gouldman Thing, and it didn't chart. He then worked for Jerry Kazanetz and Jeffrey Katz, writing bubblegum music that would be demoed by the future members of 10CC. Graham considered this to be the low point of his music career. Kevin Godley, Lowell Krem, Eric Stewart, and Graham officially became art rockers in 10CC. Jonathan King provided backing and management. 73, 10CC went to number 36 on the UK charts. Neanderthal Man and Rubber Bullets were the singles. 1981, Robert Christigau wrote in his record guide, Rock Anthems of the 70s, Quote, this is what the Beach Boys should have been doing. In 74, sheet music album, The Wall Street Shuffle, The Worst Band in the World, not these guys, it's the name of the song, it's about a band, I guess, Silly Love, and a witty, often wry collection of well-constructed and well-played songs. Farcical and outgoing, this album could have been a Frank Zappa record, but cleaner and much less cynical. Somewhere in Hollywood, it was almost Prague. In 75, it came out with the original soundtrack about an Englishman getting kinky in Paris. Vaudevillian, and it hit a pay dirt with I'm Not In Love, garnering a five-year, five-album contract with Philips Phonogram. 75, 100cc. HMV label wanted to capitalize on success of I'm Not In Love, so they put out an album of a previously released material. I guess they're allowed to do that, but my God. So all they care about is money? What about art? 76. How dare you? Each song is completely different from the next one, in melody and in theme. After this album, Godley and Crown would leave to try to become the Brit Simon and Garfunkel. About this album, Village Voice wrote, quote, They can't decide whether they are funny or pretty, and when they attempt both, they achieve neither. You and me both, guys. 77, their album, Deceptive Bends. Graham and Eric continue as 10CC with collaborating musicians comparable to Steely Dan's Walter Becker and Donald Fagan bringing in Skunk Baxter and many more. This was the first 10 C, C album I bought. I wasn't sure what to expect. And when I heard it, I still didn't know. Was it rock? The top 40? I retreated to Pink Floyd and Yes Music. Their Things We Do For Love single went to number six in the UK. Good Morning Judge and You've Got A Cold. These are rock boogie songs. Feel the Benefit is Fully Prague. This was no 5CC. 
in 77, live and let live. Or is it live and let live? Or is it live and let live? I don't know. Double live album, touring band. This album charted to number six in the UK. In 78, Bloody Tourists. Dreadlock Holiday was their third and last number one. It also charted high in Australia, New Zealand, Holland, Norway, and Sweden, and went to number 69 in the United States. 1980, look here, went to number 35. Now, Eric was in a car accident, and 10CC had to go on hiatus. This album was dance music, but it's not typically disco. It's more like Thin Lizzy, mixing of genres in the same track. Keyboard rock but not synth. These guys hate computer drums as much as I do. 1980, Animal Olympics. Time Off provided time for Goldman to score an animated film. 10cc without Eric was recorded. Frank Zappa and Pink Floyd also contributed to the score, but did not appear on the album. Contractual stuff. These songs are brilliant, not cartoon-like or juvenile. 81. 10 out of 10 with Andrew Gold. Don't Ask and Survivor were the standouts. Don't Turn Me Away was a minor hit in Canada. In 83, Windows in the Jungle. Godly and Creme made a video for Feel the Love. Since leaving 10cc, they did not become the British Simon and Garfunkel, but they had great success producing videos for a who's who of rock musicians to compete with the bands on MTV. In 87, Changing Faces, this is a compilation of 10cc hits and Godly and Creme songs. This album was well received and went to number four in the UK. And Polydor had done some market research on this one. 92, Meanwhile, recorded at five different studios across the US. Godly and Creme came back, but on vocals only. Toto's Jeff Porcaro played drums. Andrew Gold, Dr. John, and Paul McCartney helped, but to no chart success. In 95, Mirror Murder. This is the last gasp for 10cc. This album is more like half and half. Graham wrote half, and Eric wrote half. Album called Musical Vaporware. Eric left. He would go on to collaboration with Alan Parsons. 2000. And another thing. A bookend to Graham's first album, A Graham Goldman Thing. Songs of Graham's from pre 10 CC days and some new work. 2012. Love and Work. Another attempt to prove Graham's brilliance. This time he succeeds. Any day now, and memory lane rocks the cradle gently. Daylight is a message from Graham to Eric, one of fondness. The halls of rock and roll is a must here. Let's take a walk down Abbey Road. Let's sail to Muscle Shoals. They wrote the soundtracks to our lives. Hay may be gone, but love survives. These days, Graham performs his own wide range of hits, often with simple accompaniment. The songs are much better known than he is. Bus Stop, remember that song? First Girlfriend and I listen to that, holding an umbrella in the rain, sitting on a bench, or did I? Imagine it, or I dreamt it. But that song, Bus Stop, that really got to me. And I was about 13 or so. It sounded like what pop music should be like. It was up there with the Beatles, if you ask me. It just really, really sang. And Graham Goldman wrote it, and I didn't know that until much later. Well, that's enough out of me today. Uh, please hit like, it would help me out, and uh, hit the bell if you want to be notified of any new 
uh, reviews I put out, which are probably going to happen two or three times a week till I get through them all. <laughs> Be well. Love you guys.